In the past decade, Egypt has been a hotbed of archaeological activity. Many significant discoveries have been made, including the tomb of Tutankhamun and the city of Heracleon. We also found some images of wall carvings that look a lot like non-earthy creatures. What do you think? Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about the shocking discoveries in Egypt. What do you think are the discoveries? And what makes them stand out? To answer these questions, let's jump into the video. Make sure to watch till the end to find out more about the recently found wall carvings. Do you know Egypt was the birthplace of forensic fingerprint powder? You know how they utilized dust powder on CSI to identify the criminal based on their fingerprints? That's Egyptian blue, the world's earliest synthetic color created by the ancient Egyptians, not us. The first discovery which we are going to discuss is the Heraclean city. Heraclean was an ancient Egyptian port city on the Nile's Canopic Mouth, some 32 kilometers northeast of Alexandria on the Mediterranean Sea. It was swamped and its remnants are now lying in Abu Qir Bay, 2.5 kilometers off the shore, beneath 30 feet of water near Abu Qir. Thonis housed the shrine of Neith of Sais. A steel discovered on the site suggests that the city was known by both its Egyptian and Greek names at some point in its history. Thonis' fabled origins date back to the 12th century BC and it is recorded by ancient Greek historians. Its significance developed especially during the last days of the pharaohs. Canals connected it to a variety of ports and anchorages. Ferries, bridges and pontoons connected its wharves, temples and tower houses. The city began as an emporion commercial port and grew to become the country's major port for foreign commerce and tax collection by the late period. Necrotus, another commercial port 72 kilometers up the Nile, was its sister city. Goods were conveyed inland through Necrotus or across the western lake in a water passage to the adjacent town of Canopus for further distribution. Thonis had a massive temple dedicated to Khonsu, son of Amun, and known as Heracles to the Greeks. Amun worship grew increasingly popular later on. During the 6th and 4th centuries BC, when the city was at its peak, a great temple dedicated to Amun Garib, the Egyptian supreme deity of the period, stood in the heart of the city. In the 4th century BC, King Nectanebo I built several improvements to the temple. Sanctuaries devoted to Osiris and other deities at Heraclean were famed for miraculous healing and drew travelers from all over the world. Archaeologists discovered traces of the mysteries of Osiris' ceremony in Heracleon, which took place each year during the month of Koyak. The deity was carried in procession from the Temple of Amun in that city to his shrine on the Canopus in his ceremonial boat. Alexandria surpassed Thonis, Heracleon, as Egypt's major port in the 2nd century BC. The city was weakened throughout time by a mix of earthquakes, tsunamis, and increasing sea levels. The ground on which the center island of Heracleon was constructed succumbed to soil liquefaction around the end of the 2nd century BC, most likely as a result of a catastrophic flood. The firm clay dissolved quickly and the structures fell into the river. A few people remained throughout the Roman period in the commencement of Arab domination, but by the end of the 7th century AD, Thonis had vanished under the water. Next, let's talk about Khufu's ship. It may come as a surprise, but the discovery of the Khufu ship in 1954 was unplanned. The Khufu ship, one of two recovered by Kamal el Malak, is the world's oldest undamaged ship, constructed for King Pharaoh Khufu during the 4th dynasty, circa 2500 BC. The solar spacecraft was uncovered during the cleaning procedure of the Great Pyramids during archaeological investigations in the Giza region. 42 pieces of rock were unearthed after unearthing a massive limestone wall and excavating to the very bottom of it. The Khufu solar boat was discovered, although it was in thousands of pieces. It was discovered in five trenches near the Great Pyramid of Khufu and meticulously reconstructed from 1,200 pieces of cedar wood by leading Egyptian restorer Ahmed Youssef Mustafa, who spent 14 years gathering the expertise required to properly recreate the vessel to its former splendor. Traveling to boatyards in Old Cairo, El Mahdi, and Alexandria and witnessing shipbuilders at work, as well as examining the ancient inscriptions on tomb walls and the numerous smaller model ships in the tomb. The ship is said to have been built from 1,200 pieces of wood fastened together by sycamore nails and half a grass ropes. 
The solar ship is presented in all its strength and splendor as the centerpiece of the Khufu Ship Museum, spanning 43.6 meters long and 5.9 meters broad. Vessels comparable to the Khufu ship were employed for a variety of purposes throughout ancient Egypt's history, including delivering construction materials up and down the Nile. The specific role of the Khufu ship is unclear, however, it is classified as a solar barge. Historically, such were utilized for ceremonial purposes. The ancient Egyptians believed that when the resurrected pharaoh ascended to the falcon-headed sun deity Ra, the Khufu ship is said to have been used by the great late king as a burial barge to transfer his embalmed corpse from Memphis to his last resting place at Giza. Another legend is that it was utilized by Khufu as a pilgrimage ship for the great pharaoh. Both explanations credit the fact that the ship shows traces of being in touch with or utilized in water. The last discovery which we are going to discuss is the Tomb of King Tut. Tutankhamun's tomb, also known by its tomb number KV-62, is the burial site of Tutankhamun, a pharaoh of ancient Egypt's 18th dynasty in the Valley of the Kings. The tomb has four rooms as well as an entry staircase and passageway. It is smaller and less elaborately ornamented than other Egyptian royal tombs of the period, and it most likely began as a non-royal tomb that was altered for Tutankhamun's use following his untimely death. Tutankhamun, like previous pharaohs, was buried with a broad array of funerary artifacts and personal things like coffins, furniture, clothes, and jewelry. However, these items had to be packed tightly due to the very restricted area. Robbers broke into the tomb twice in the years after the burial, but Tutankhamun's mummy and most of the burial artifacts were unharmed. The tomb's low location, cut into the valley floor, enabled debris accumulated by floods and tomb building to conceal its entrance. As a result, unlike other tombs in the valley, it was not looted during the Third Intermediate Period. Excavators headed by Howard Carter found Tutankhamun's tomb in 1922. The tomb created a media frenzy as a consequence of the number and magnificent look of the burial items, and it became the most renowned discovery in Egyptology history. Carter's benefactor, the Earl of Carnarvon, died during the excavation process, sparking rumors that the tomb was cursed. The find yielded very little information concerning Tutankhamun's reign and the preceding Amarna period, but it did give insight into the material culture of affluent ancient Egyptians as well as patterns of ancient tomb robbing. Tutankhamun became one of the most well-known pharaohs and some of his tomb's artifacts, such as his golden funeral mask, are among the most well-known pieces of ancient Egyptian art. The majority of the tomb's contents were transferred to the Egyptian Museum in Cairo and are currently on exhibit at the Grand Egyptian Museum in Giza, however Tutankhamun's corpse and sarcophagus remain in the tomb. Since its discovery, flooding and excessive tourist traffic have caused damage to the tomb, and a copy of the burial chamber has been built nearby to relieve visitor strain on the original tomb. This brings us to the end of our video. Don't be afraid of giving suggestions on future videos in the comment section below.